one man is rewriting the rules and taking it to another level. And the next level, and the next level. <laughs> the seventh level. You just feel how natural it is. You feel how open you become to your prospects. And in response, they usually become more open to you. Founded by Jeremy Miner, Seventh Level is the only friction-free sales system guaranteed to raise revenue. In my life, it's been revolutionary. And his followers are feeling the difference. His training has transformed everything. It is precise, and it really draws out emotions people around the world are starting to catch on we're going to tie in the new model of selling to your product or service that you sell these tools can work for anyone in any industry at any time and it's time to get on board before the ship sets sail it's seventh level with jeremy minor All right, Jeremy Miner, let's go live here on IG and the TikTok phone, the countdown, three, two, one. Let's flip that bad boy around. Well done, Nick. All right. All right, so every, every Tuesday, we go live uh, in about five different uh, platforms, uh, and I give you a little bit of a few different golden nuggets. All right. So this week, uh, we're going live here on the IG phone, Instagram phone. Hey, hey, what's up? Instagram, 600 and I want to say 65,000 of you run around on there. We're going live here on TikTok. We got 120 some thousand of you follow me around on there. We're also going live here in StreamYard. We're going live in our Sales Revolution Facebook group. Uh, 116,000 of you run around there. We're going live in our YouTube channel. That thing is growing like crazy. About 140,000 of you on that now. Going live in our Facebook business page. Almost 170,000 of you on that. We got LinkedIn and my personal Facebook. Now, today, we're going to talk about one of the biggest objections that I know most of you get, especially if you sell business to consumer. Now, if you sell business to business, what I'm also going to show you can help you with other objections that you're actually losing deals from right now. So I want you to type in me. If you get to the end of your presentation, you start going in for the close and they say these dreaded words. This really sounds good, but I just need to talk with my spouse. This sounds good, but I just need to talk with my with my department head. This sounds good, but... I just need to kind of talk through it with my CPA. This sounds good, but I need to talk about it with my financial advisor. This sounds good, but I need to talk about it with my uncle who lives in a van down by the river. So type in me in the comments if you ever get a prospect that says, I really like this, but I just need to talk with my spouse, business partner, CPA, grandma, grandpa, uncle, aunt, fire department, whoever it is. Type in me in the comments if you lose sales from that objection every single week. Pretty much all of you, right? If you're real with yourselves. Now, how do we help the prospect overcome that objection? But also, how can we pre-frame it at the beginning of that conversation and throughout those conversations, depending on if we sell B2C or B2B, to prevent that objection from happening in the prospect's mind. That's called objection prevention. So I'm going to show you both today. Now type in fire emoji if you want me to actually spend the next 30 minutes and break this process down for you so you stop losing sales to I want to talk with my spouse objection. Type in me if that's what you want to learn here in the next 30 minutes. All right. Now, if you're brand new, if you just started following me somewhere, let's say you just started following me on TikTok or Instagram or the YouTube channel or Facebook groups, or we got tons of Facebook groups out there, uh, Facebook business page. My name is Jeremy Miner, the weirdo guy. Um, I'm the founder of Seventh Level, an organization that trains salespeople exactly like you. So we train salespeople like you, sales professionals like you, sales executives like you, sales leaders like you, sales management like you consultants, coaches, entrepreneurs, business owners, and we train you how to learn specific questions 
techniques in your tonality, body language, that work with human behavior rather than work against it. What do I even mean by that? Because are you are you 100% sure the questions you've been trained to ask for your industry are the right ones? Are you 100% sure you know how to use your tonality to get your prospects to let their guard down and want to open up to you emotionally? Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. All right, now, here's what I'm going to have you do. If you're on the live right now, because I know there's, I think, between the Facebook group, YouTube, LinkedIn, IG, and TikTok, and the Facebook business page, there's about 1,500 of you on here right now between all those platforms. So what I want you to do is go down to the bottom of your phone if you're on the live, and I want you to post hashtag live. So if you're on the live right now, go post hashtag live. And if you're on the replay, I want you to go post hashtag replay. So go down to your phone. I want you to post hashtag live. And if you're on the replay, post hashtag replay. All right. So if you're on the live, post hashtag live. On the replay, post hashtag replay. Now I'm going to have each of you grab your phone and I want you to smash the like button and I want you to smash the heart button. You better do that if I'm going to show you how to do this. I could be out golfing right now. It's about 73 degrees here in Scottsdale. Just go out and golf here the next 30 minutes. Well, probably the next couple hours. So if you want me to show you how to overcome this objection and help prevent it, I want you to smash the heart button and I want you to smash the like button. I better see thousands of smashed hearts and thousands of smashed likes. You guys better do it there. All right, now I'm going to move this IG phone over here. We got me cramped up here. The small office. We're moving offices here in about 90 days to a facility that's about five times as big, thank heavens. This place is small. It's only like 4,000 square feet. We don't have enough room in here. All right. Now, how do we do? So let me come over here. I'm going to share. Let me move this over here for you guys a little bit so you can actually see the whole thing. TikTok and IG. All right. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of things here that are very, very important for you. One second. Okay. Now, with the spouse objection, what I'm first going to show you how to do is this. How can we learn how to pre-frame the spouse objection? Or it could be a uh, department head objection. It could be, let me talk with my boss objection if you sell B2B. It, just, it could be that different. How do we prevent that objection from happening in the prospect's mind? Okay, so I'm first going to show you how do we prevent that objection from happening in the prospect's mind. Now, this is called what? Objection prevention. Okay. Now, when I was in sales like you in the trenches every day, I sold in four industries in my almost 18 year sales career. I sold two business to consumer and two business to business, one SMB, one more enterprise. I was, so many reps were focused on how do I throw out rebuttals for these objections? Do you know what I was focused on? How do I prevent the objection from happening in their mind? Why are objections, why do objections even happen in the prospect's mind? Is it their fault? Did they wake up that morning before they talked to you and planned that halfway through your presentation or halfway through that conversation or 10 seconds into that cold call that they were going to go into fight or flight mode and give you an objection? Did they plan out like before they got on Zoom with you, before they got on the phone call with you, before you met them at their home, before you met them at their office, that at the end they were going to say, I need to talk to my spouse? Was that already planned out before you started talking to them? Did they plan that out? No. That is a triggered reaction based off what? It's a triggered reaction based off of our lack of skill level. It's based off we don't know how to yet build a gap from where they are to where they want to be. So they don't feel we can actually solve their problems and get them the result they want. So because of that, what happens? They have a lack of certainty. Now that lack of certainty 
leads to objections like, I need to talk to my spouse. I need to think it over. I need to do more research. I need to keep looking around. Because what's the likelihood they're going to do any of that? Very unlikely, right? But I'd be right with that. So I'm first going to show you how to help prevent the objection. Now, if we can help you prevent this objection, even 50%, take away 50% of this happening to you, how many more sales do you start making? Okay. You see the difference there. Now, if we still get this objection, I'm going to show you how to easily help them overcome that objection themselves. Rather than me throwing out a rebuttal, which as you know, how often works a small percentage of the time, maybe it works three or four out of 10 times for you. I'd rather it get to work. If I can help them overcome the concern themselves, I'd rather do that where it overcomes it eight or nine times out of 10. Okay. And if I still can't help them overcome that, I'm going to schedule a next step with them to actually meet with them after they talk with their spouse. And I'm going to show them exactly how to position with their spouse. But that very rarely needs to even happen because most of the time I can help them overcome it themselves. Okay. It's pretty easy. Once you learn the right skills, pretty damn hard if you don't learn the, learn the right skills. Would it be right? Okay. Now, how do we start to prevent it? Ready to write this down? Here we go. Now, let me show you some generic examples first, and then I wrote down about five or six different industry-specific examples so you can see it in writing, all right? So if I want to start preventing the objection from happening, when I get into that conversation, I'm not going to ask them how their spouse feels about and then repeat back the end result within the first one minute of the conversation, right? Because I haven't built any trust. I haven't really built a gap from where they are to where they want to be. But halfway through that conversation, now it depends on what you sell. There are, this is not a straight jacket interpretation here. There are some uh, circumstances where I might bring it up earlier, but I'm simply going to lean in and I'm going to ask, how does your spouse feel about you? And I'm going to repeat back the thing they said they wanted. Does that make sense? Okay. That's a generic example. How does your spouse feel about you? what? How does your spouse feel about you putting in this new bathroom set so when her mom comes over to take a shower, she doesn't actually fall? If I'm selling rebath, right? Remodeling bathrooms for senior citizens. I could literally do this for anything that is sold. Now, let's say in this example, you sell fitness, like some fitness training program or weight loss. You could be a gym. You could be a personal trainer. And let's say the prospect's problem is they want to lose 108 pounds. Okay, write this down. So I could go through halfway through that conversation after that I built that gap and I can lean in and say, how does your spouse feel about you, you know, losing the 108 pounds so you're able to walk your daughter down the aisle in 10 to 15 years? Now, am I going to bring up them walking their daughter down the aisle in 10 to 15 years if they didn't say that? No because that would seem kind of salesy and weird, right? Okay. But if they said, if I, if they said, you know, I really want to lose 108 pounds, hold on, losing the weight. Why, why so important to you now though? Well, I'm just, you know, my uncle died of a heart attack because he was really overweight and he just never, he never got to see his daughters. He never got to walk them down the aisle when they got married. And I'm, I'm just a little bit concerned about it. See, if they said that, see how I plug that in. So if I'm talking to, let's say if I'm talking to, let's say if I'm talking to a guy and he's the one that walks the daughter down the aisle, okay? In most cultures, that's the way it is. Sometimes it's the women, the mother walking down the aisle. It just, it just depends. It could be the same thing. How does your spouse feel about you losing the 108 pounds so that you're able to, you know, walk your daughters down the aisle? Now, I don't want to say, how does your spouse feel about you losing weight? In this example, why would I want to add on the specific number of pounds they wanted to lose if I sold fitness? And why would I want it to add on the end result of losing the weight? See, I'm not, if I sell weight loss, I'm not selling weight loss. I'm selling the results of what that weight loss does for them. That's what I'm selling. Does that make sense to you? Okay. So look at this for a second. How does your spouse feel about you losing the 108 pounds? So you're able to walk your daughters down the aisle in 10 to 12 years. Now, is he going to say, 
No, my spouse does not want me to lose 108 pounds so I can walk my daughters down the aisle. Of course, they're going to be like, oh, well, yeah, I mean, for sure she'd want me to do that. Okay. Now that's the first step. You're not over there. But see how I'm pre-framing. If he says in this example that his spouse wants him to lose the weight for the end result, walk the daughters down the aisle, it's far harder for him to say at the end, well, I need to talk to my spouse about losing the weight. Do you see the dip? See how I'm pre-framing that? Okay. I'm not saying that at the end. I'm saying that more in the middle after I've built some type of gap. All right. Now I'm going to show you some other examples. There's, there's, there's another pre-framed question you have to ask after that. And I'm going to show you what to do. Now, let's say if you sold life insurance. Okay. Life insurance is the largest industry we train in the world. We train tens of thousands in this space. We train one company that has like 29,000 agents. Okay. All right. How does your spouse feel about you having enough coverage so she can pay off the house and the cars and the credit cards when you pass away so she doesn't have to get a second job? See, so I'm going to pace that out. Let me pace that a little bit better for her. How does your spouse feel about you having the coverage to be able to pay off the house and all the expenses when you pass away so she doesn't have to go out and get a second job? Now, is Dan or Susie going to say, Nope, they wouldn't want me to be able to pay off the 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 the, the house and, and the expenses. They would want me to get a second job. Do you see how I'm pre-framing that? Okay, do you see how I'm doing that? How does your spouse feel about you having enough coverage to be able to pay off the house and all the expenses when you pass away so she doesn't have to pull the kids out of school and sell the property? See, I could add that in. Oh, no, they would want me to do that for sure. See how I'm starting to prevent that objection. I'm starting to see it in their mind that their spouse already wants them to do this. Does that make sense? Money for the beard says on TikTok, save yourself this nonsense and retraction by Gino Wickman. Oh, I know. Money and beard. It's all a bunch of nonsense. What would I know about selling? I mean, I only made multiple seven figures a year in commissions. As a salesperson like you, how much are you making? Are you making more than I was? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say you're probably making less. So if you're not, if you're making less, you might want to pay attention because maybe you could learn something today. You don't have to. I'm doing this for you for free. You don't have to be on the live. Give that man a Snickers bar on TikTok. He needs a Snickers bar. Please give him a Snickers bar, somebody. Come in and give him a Snickers bar. We need a Snickers bar today. All right. Now let's let me go to a different industry. All right. Let's say if I'm selling home improvement and I'm selling cabinet repair, I'm putting in new cabinets or whatever. I'm upgrading the cabinets, right? Home improvement, I think the fifth or sixth largest industry we train in the world. We train thousands in this space too. All right. So look, look what I'm doing here. Not think. Don't say, how, do, how does your spouse think about? I want to say feel. Feel is emotion. It keeps them on their emotional side of their brain. Think thinks them on their logical side of their brain. Okay, do you see how I'm doing that? How does your spouse feel about, you know, getting more of a, a modern cabinet? So like you said, you feel comfortable inviting your guests over for parties and events. How does she feel about you getting more of a modern cabinet so she feels more comfortable about inviting her friends and family over? If that's what they said they were looking at getting the cabinets for. If they said, we want to get the cabinets because we don't, they're old, outdated, and we don't feel comfortable inviting our friends over for events and parties. I'm going to plug that in. Do you see how I'm plugging that in? It doesn't matter. Okay. How does your spouse feel about, you know, upgrading your cabinets so you can actually have guests and, and people over for parties and events? Now, if they didn't say that, I'm not going to make that up. Do you see what I'm doing there? Okay. All right. Let's keep going here. I'm going to show you more. No. Nope. Okay. Now. Okay. Let me show you this. All right. Okay. Now, sometimes when you ask that question, especially, especially, especially because if you're not a client, you wouldn't know how to use your tonality to build a gap. If you're a client, you already know how to do all that. But if you're just watching me on free lives, you know 0.000001% of what our clients get trained. 
because you're just watching basic free content. Okay, nothing we can do for you without being a client. But sometimes they'll come back and say, well, I'm, I'm not sure I'd have to ask her. Well, I'm not sure I'd have to ask him. What do you say then? Okay, and just go on. No, you don't. I can say this. I mean, does she want you to? And I'm going to repeat back the end result or the negative consequence if nothing changes. So if they're like, well, I'm not sure I'd have to talk to her or I'd talk to him. Well, does he does he want you to keep the older cabinets in and not have people over if I'm selling home improvement? Now, let me show you again. OK, so if they give you that objection, I mean, does she does she wants you to lose the 108 pounds so you don't keep putting all that pressure on your heart and end up having a heart attack. See what I'm doing there now. What type of tonality do I have to use? OK, I can't say, well, I mean, does she want you to lose 108 pounds so you don't keep putting that pressure on your heart and end up having a heart attack, man? I can't say that because then what happens? They're going to get defensive. Well, no, I, you know, they're going to they're going to argue with you. But if I use that in a concern, I mean, does she does she want you to lose the 108 pounds so you. Does she not want you to lose 108 pounds? I mean, does she want you to lose the 105 pounds so you don't keep putting pressure on your heart and end up having a, a heart attack? See how I'm acting concerned. I'm using a concern tone. Do you see the difference in that? Okay. I mean, does she want you? Okay. Somebody's asking, why do you do this training? Well, we're a sales training company. We're the third largest in the United States, according to Selling Power magazine or somewhere in that range. We don't just do all this for free. We have tens of thousands of clients. We have Fortune 500 company clients. We have SMB clients. We have individual salespeople selling anything. People come to us because they want to go through our training programs as a client so they can sell more. That's why I'm doing this. I'm an owner of a sales training company. Typically, that's what sales training companies do. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. I mean, does she want you to lose the 105 pounds? You don't keep putting the pressure on your heart and end up having a heart attack? Well, I mean, no, for sure. I mean, she would want me to do that. Now, let me show you something here. This is called... In any PQ identity frame. All right. Now, here's what I'm going to do at this point. I'm still on objection prevention. I haven't even showed you how to overcome the objection if you get it. I'd rather help you prevent it. Who in here would rather prevent objection, most objections from happening? See, if you want to get into the top 1% of salespeople in your industry, you got to focus more on objection prevention than you do on objection handling. Objection handling is what average salespeople do. Objection prevention are what the very best learn how to do. I'd rather prevent most objections from happening. You sell a lot more, you make a lot more money, and you don't have all the pressure on you all the time. Good Lord, why would you want to throw out rebuttals all the time when you can prevent most of these objections from happening in their mind? There you go. Well, I mean, good for you. I mean, you'd be surprised. I mean, I talk to a lot of people and some of them just keep pushing it down the road. They never end up losing the weight. And then... What ends up happening to them? Prospect. Yeah, they they die of a heart attack. See what I just did there? If I'm staying in fitness, after they say, no, no, no. I mean, she, he would, he would want me to lose that weight. Now I'm going to make an identity frame on them. This is how I'm pre-framing it. Well, I mean, good for you. I mean, you'd be surprised. I mean, I talk to a lot of people and some of them, I mean, they just, they just keep pushing down the road. They never end up losing the weight. And then what, what ends up happening to them? And you know what the prospect's going to say? Yeah, they die of a heart attack. Now, what is the likelihood after I pre-framed it that way that a prospect's going to come at the end of the presentation and say, well, I need to talk to my spouse about it. You talk with your spouse about losing the weight? Very hard for them to do. Okay. See what I'm doing here. Okay. Then I can ask, they said, so they die of a heart attack. Yeah. I mean, if, if that happened to you, like if you didn't do anything, what would go on in your wife's mind knowing that it could have all been prevented 
simply by going through the right training and exercise programs where you would have lost 105 pounds? What would go on in her mind? See how I'm pre-framing that. Yeah, I mean, if that happened to you, but I mean, yeah, if that happened to you, I mean, what would be going on in her mind, in your wife's mind, if she knew that that could have been prevented simply by going through the right training and exercise and diet programs where you would have lost 105 pounds? What would be going on in her mind knowing that? Concern tone. See what I'm doing there. Okay. Let's keep on going. Is that making sense to you? All right. Now, let me show you a few ones. Let's say if you sell network marketing, I could show you this. I could show you this for every industry on the planet. We already do this for every industry on the planet, including yours watching me right now. Now, you want to learn how to overcome this objection. Do you want to learn how to prevent this objection? And do you want to learn how to build a gap from where they are to where they want to be that's so big? that you prevent most objections, you lose some from sales now, message me directly right now. If you want to acquire those skills, message me directly. If you're on IG, TikTok, the Facebook group, the Facebook business page, YouTube, LinkedIn, my Facebook, message me directly right now. And we'll message you some different training options if you want to finally learn the right skills to sell more. You don't have to sell more. Message me directly if you want to acquire those skills. Our clients who are in your industry, that's why they're making two, three, four, five times what you are right now, simply because they have acquired the right skills that work with human behavior. That's it. No other difference. Okay. Let's say if you sold a fill, you're in a fit, you sold network marketing, huge industry we train as well. Okay. I mean, I could do the same thing. I mean, does she, does she want you to have your own business where you can make more money or just keep commuting back and forth to work an hour each way every single week. See how I'm repeating back the thing that they said they wanted, have a business to make more money. And then I repeat back the negative or does she just want you to keep commuting back and forth to work every week. Now what's he or she going to say? Yes. They'd want me to make less money and keep commuting back and forth every week. No, they're like, Oh no, they for sure. He would want me to he'd do that for sure. Well, then I'm going to do identity frame. Well, good for you. I mean, you'd be surprised. I mean, I talk to a lot of people and some of them, I mean, they just keep pushing it down the road and never are able to leave their job. So they never have that quality time with their family. You see what I just did there? Now, at the end of that, I'm going to say, but for you and your spouse, why is doing this? So important to you now, though. I mean, for you and your spouse, why is doing this so important to you now, though? Now, why did I emphasize the word this? Notice how I said for you and your spouse. See how I'm pre-framing where I don't get this objection. I mean, for you, for you and your spouse, why is starting your own business so important to you now, though? Well, the reason why we feel like we need to start our own business is. See, it's, it's almost impossible to get a spouse objection at the end. I could do the same thing if I sold B2B. If I'm talking to a business partner, let's say if I'm selling to a smaller company and I'm, I'm talking to a business partner, a one legger. I mean, but for you and your business partner, why is, is, is increasing, why is scaling to $5 million a month so important to you now though? It's hard for them to come back and say, well, I need to talk to my business partner when they just said, why for them and their business partner, it's so important to scale to $5 million a month. You just have to learn how to pre-frame it, okay? All right, now, how do you overcome the actual objection if you still get it? Type in me if you want to learn that. Now, when I sold B to C, do you know how many times I got the spouse objection? Rare. 5% of the time, if that. Because I knew how to help prevent it, okay? That's what I'm trying to show you how to do. All right, now, how do we overcome the objection if we still get it? If you still get the objection, here's what to do. Everybody ready? Type in me if you want to learn this. All right. So if they're like, well, this sounds really good, Jeremy, but you know, I just need some time to talk with my spouse. Yeah, yeah, that's not a problem. How does your spouse feel about you? And I'm going to repeat back the end result. Okay. Let's say if I sold solar, look at this. 
Yeah, that's not a problem. How does your spouse feel about locking in your rate and lowering your bill? Nope, she wouldn't want me to lock in my rate and lower. See, they can't say that. Okay, you see what I'm doing here? How does your spouse feel about locking in your rate and you're lowering your bill? Nope, he would not want me to lower my bill. Nope, he would not want me to lock in the rate. See, they can't say that. Now, they're always going to say, no, I think they would, no, they would want that. See, I'm repeating back the end result they said they wanted. All right, now look at here. Now I'm going to ask a consequence question. Now, in this example, let's say if I sold for a marketing agency, okay, huge industry we train as well. But what happens if you go to her and she doesn't want you to get the funding to get these higher quality leads? I mean, how would you get to seven listings a month without getting a higher quality lead? So let's say if I'm a salesperson and I'm selling to a real estate agent, higher quality leads. And that real estate agent told me, that they have, they get about one to two listings a month, but they want to get to six to seven listings a month. See what I'm going to do here. Well, how does your spouse feel about you getting a higher quality lead so you can get seven or eight listings a month? Nope, she would not want me to get eight listings a month. See, they can't say that. They're going to be like, oh, I think they would want me to do. Then I'm going to ask a consequence question. Well, what happens if you go to him and he doesn't want you to get the funding to get the higher quality leads? I mean, how are you ever going to get to seven to eight listings every month? The point is they're going to think to themselves, there's no way I can without doing this. Okay. Then I'm going to loop back around. Now, this is an example of what's called NEPQ looping. Now, write this down. We only train this in our virtual training courses for clients. I'm going to show you a sneak peek. We do not train advanced training in reels. We do very basic stuff. Golden nuggets. That's it. Just little, little stuff. Going to be hard for you to triple your sales with knowing 0.001% of what we train our clients in your industry. I wouldn't be able to do it. And I have uh, advanced training as a behavioral scientist and advanced tonality and body language and everything. All right. And APQ looping. Have you ever heard now? Let's say if they still won't go with that. They're like, well, I know. I know I need to do something. But now I can use this frame. This is called heavy is the head that wears the crown frame probably never heard of that. Okay. I mean, have you ever heard heavy is the head that wears the crown, John? No, I've never heard of that. Well, whose responsibility is it in your family to generate enough listings to really provide the lifestyle they want? So let's say if I'm talking to, let's say a guy in this phase, it could be a gal. It doesn't really matter. I'm just making that up. Well, whose responsibility is in your family to generate enough listings to provide them the lifestyle they want? Well, it's my responsibility then I can lean in and say this. And I have to do it in a concerned tone and I have to lower my voice. I cannot say it in a monotone or a defensive voice. I have to lean in and say, then why are you putting that responsibility on her shoulders when that's your responsibility? Now, what did I just do? I put my hand on my chest that is a body language technique that signifies what? That I'm concerned for their consequences if they don't get solved. Can I ask why up until now you've put that responsibility on your spouse's shoulders when it's your responsibility to get those listings? I have to say that in a concerned tone. If I do not say that in a concerned tone, that will backfire, I promise you. Now, type in me if you want to learn advanced tonality to get your prospects to let their guard down. Type in me in the comments if you want to acquire that skill, a tone that shows empathy. Now, if that still doesn't work, I'm going to loop back around. See how I'm always looping until I help them overcome. I'm always looping back around. I mean, does she want you to go from two listings to seven listings a month? Or does she just want you to stay at two listings a month? So if I'm selling leads to a real estate agent, does she want you to go to seven listings a month or she just wants you to stay at two? It's hard for him or her to say, no, she'd want me to stay at two listings a month. Then I'm going to loop back around and say, well, are you going to stay at two listings a month or are you going to get the leads necessary to get to seven leads a month like our clients are? See what I'm doing there. Okay, then I'm going to loop back around. If that doesn't work, I'm still going to loop back around. And what do you feel is your next step 
oh no, I need to get to seven listings a month. Well, in your mind, what do you feel is your next step to get you to seven listings a month? See what I'm doing there. Are you ready to get to seven now or just stay at two? No, I'm ready to get to seven. Well, I mean, you don't have to get to seven. I mean, you could just stay at two. I mean, it really has no impact on me if you just stay at two listings a month. I mean, who does that have an impact on? They're going to say, yeah, it has an impact on me. Then you're going to loop back around and you're going to say, well, what's going to put you? What's going to put you in the best position to get you to seven listings a month then? Is it going to be the higher quality leads like our clients are in your space? Or is it going to be what you're doing now? See what I'm doing a comparison frame there. Oh, you guys showing you a little bit too much. Okay. Then I'm going to loop back around and say, well, what do you feel like you should do then to make sure we get you to seven listings a month? And that's it. That is an example of how to overcome the spouse objection. Now, Type in me if you want to learn a lot more than what I just showed you so you can sell a lot more of your products and services than you are now. In the comments section, type in me if you want to start acquiring that skill. And type in me if you feel like if I trained you for 30 minutes to an hour every day, seven days a week, Type in me if you feel like we would help you sell far more than you are now. So in the comment section, type in me if you feel like if I trained you 30 minutes to one hour every single day, seven days a week for the next month, the next three months, the next six months, the next year, that you would sell far more than you are currently doing right now. Type in me if that's you. Type in me. Now, how are you going to do that? Pretty easy around here. Do you want to acquire those skills like our clients are who are in the same industry as you that are doing two, three, four, five times what you are now in sales? And I'm not joking when I say that. Message me directly right now. So if you're on YouTube, if you're on Instagram, if you're on LinkedIn, if you're in the Facebook group, if you're in the Facebook business page, if you're on TikTok, message me directly right now. Either myself, we'll probably have, there's between all six of those platforms, there's like 1,700 people on here. Actually, I don't know about 1,400 now. We're going to have probably four or 500 that will message us. So I'll be back there probably with like 10 or 15 people in our company. We'll message you back some details, ask you some questions, okay, about what you feel like you're currently saying or maybe asking or not asking or how you're using your tone that's preventing you from selling more. Now, once we understand that, then we'll even allow you to book with one of our account managers that will go through all the different training program options we have. We don't have one. We have 36 different versions, depending on your industry. Then they'll recommend which training program is going to give you the biggest result and skill level that you're actually looking for if you want to sell more of what you're doing. OK, so type in me if you can't figure out how to, how to message me, uh, post in the comments, hashtag NEPQ and either myself or somebody on the team will message you back. All right, everybody, we'll see you later. Make sure you're on the Facebook group live tomorrow. We will go live every Wednesday. We interview a client from a completely different industry and we break down their sales process that we've taught them and some of our advanced sales training programs. Make sure you're in the Facebook group Sales Revolution. We only go live on Wednesdays in the Facebook group. We don't go live on Instagram or TikTok and other platforms on Wednesday. So I'll have somebody on my team drop in the Facebook join link. That is Sales Revolution. So go to Facebook. In the search bar, type in Sales Revolution. You can join our free Facebook group. There's probably 116,000, 117,000 people in there. All right. I've got to get out of here. We'll see you soon. Stay out of trouble. Thank <laughs> you.